Hello friends, welcome you in this video tutorial and in, the, in this video tutorial we are going to talk about the serial version UID and versioning in Java serialization mechanism. So if you ever implemented serializable interface then you would have seen the warning right if you put cursor over here then my class implements serializable then you can see the warning saying that the serializable class employed does not declare a static final serial version UID field of type long right so if your class implements serializable interface and you haven't explicitly declare a serial version UID uh, with the type of long then you'll get this kind of warning message in your class right if uh, if you did wonder why this warning then this video will help help you to understand it right so here we'll talk about the serial version uid and versioning a simple explanation for why do we need to declare a serial version uid is it helps with versioning suppose you have a uh, some class which is uh, serialized and it changes before it is deserialized you will need to consider what happens in that situation can you allow the new version of your class to read old data right uh, that's the question right so to help with these versioning scenarios serialization process in java uh, provides a simple versioning mechanism using serial version uid right so when we talk about the serial how we can generate serial version uid right uh, the stream unique identifier is a 64-bit hash uh, of the class name interface uh, class names methods and fields so basically serial version id basically if you do not add then uh, one of the serial version id will be generated at the runtime by the java runtime environment and that will include the basically class name interface uh, uh, names if your class implements any interface then that also gets included method names and uh, fields name all those uh, parameters taken into consideration and that generate the serial version uid right so if you are using id like eclipse and you have a class that implements serializable interface then you will generate a war uh, then you, you will get a warning up front that uh, serial version id is not declared right then eclipse uh, will also give you options if you put a cursor over here then eclipse you provide two options first option is saying that add default serial version uid if you select this one then a uh, serial version id uh, which is a type of long final and static and that's a private access modifier that is get, getting added with value one right that's a type of long that's what one l uh, or if you select second option right saying that add generated serial version I, uid then this will generate a huge number of type long uh, with the serial version uid and you this will be added something like this so tools are very handy to generate basically serial version uid right in case you choose to ignore the warning uh, even after uh, even then by default serialization mechanism in java will generate serial version uid uh, both the name of the class and the serial version uid are written to the object stream when you convert uh, your object into the byte stream then uh, during deserialization again serial version uid will be generated and compare with the previously written serial version uid if there is a mismatch then uh, th that means version is changed and invalid class invalid class exception will be thrown so let's say i do not choose to add any uh, basically serial version uid in my class then uh, warning is there and i'm going to uh, ignore this warning then what will happen so this is my class which implements serializable interface and we have a private fields and public setter getter method and in main method uh, i have a two methods serialize, serialize object and deserialize object right so let's uh, call the uh, serialize object and there we have written the serialization mechanism right so here you can see if you would have watched my previous video tutorial then you might have seen how we can serialize uh, an object right in java so it's pretty straightforward now if i run this application then this is saying that uh, employee object is serialized right and this message is coming because of this sop right now i'm calling the deserialize right deserialize 
object and this serialized object basically that will read a byte of a stream from the this file which is already generated in the class path if i refresh then you can see this file is generated now deserialization deserialized object i'm calling i'm i'm trying to create recreate employee object from the byte of a stream so this is called deserialization and here you can see uh, successfully uh, successfully we have generated that object right uh, we have constructed that object from the byte stream now let's say i, I go to the, this class and here i go and add one more fields right and i would say double salary right just i have added just i have added one field nothing i'm not going to even generate the setters and getters and uh, whatever uh, this file is generated uh, by the uh, by the serialization process that is the older one after that we have made changes in this class right and we are relying on the default uh, serial version uid right now if i do the deserialization process after changing this my model class then let's see what happens oops so your serialization process is gonna fail saying that java.io dot invalid class exception and what is the message saying that com dot infotech dot model dot employ uh, local class incompatible stream uh, class desc serial version uid this and local class serial version uid is this so earlier uh, earlier uh, i mean uh, runtime had calculated and that was stored this serial version uid but now local serial version id is get, getting changed so there is some mismatch right because you have added one field and this because of that uh, this is going to fail right so that's the basically default serial uh, default uh, basically default serial version uh, default uh, when you do not add any serial version uid then default uh, uh, serial version uid works right now let's say uh, i'm going to delete this field and i'm going to add explicitly a field like uh, add generated serial version uid right and let's add explicitly a serial version uid now you can see warning uh, has gone away now i do the deserialization uh, serialization process again right and uh, if i run it then deserialization process has happened file is getting generated so if you refresh i haven't deleted previous file so file name is same now i'm going to deserialize it right and uh, serialization process happens successfully now i do the same thing what i had done uh, earlier what i'll do sorry i'm not going to change the serial version id i'll keep the serial version id same but again i'm going to add one more fields right uh, let's say private double and let's say salary now at this time let's check it out whether uh, i'm not going to call serialize method so keep the that uh, employee.ser which uh, was generated by the older version of this class now we have made changes we have added one more fields over here and if i do the deserialization then at this time deserialization happens successfully right so but let's say you did some uh, modification like you have added one fields and setter getter method right let's say i add setter getter method for this field now now uh, we have a older version of our serialized byte of a stream and if i call the deserialize then still this is going to work right this is a kind of problem so if some if you want to force enforce someone so there has been significant change in this class and you will have to take latest version of this class before you deserialize it right then how we can enforce so let's say i i, I do change this serial version uid right and if someone will try to deserialize with the older file then that class that class will throw uh, invalid class exception right so that's the thing we'll have to keep in mind now whoever will try to deserialize with the older file then that th that guy will understand okay there is a, some new version of class has been uh, created so they will have to take the uh, i mean latest version of employee class and they have to basically serialize it and then after they will try to uh, basically deserialize so again we have what we have done we have serialized and if i try to deserialize then at this time 
this is gonna completely success now here you can see this is going to be success now uh, there are some of the key points when we talk about the serial version uid we will have to keep in mind like first uh, serial version uid is used for the versioning of the uh, serialized streams during serialization process serial version uid is also stored uh, during deserialization uh, generated serial version uid is matched with the stored one and if there is mismatch process gets failed right now second point we will have to keep in mind serial version uid is a 64 bits hash of the class name interface class names methods and fields so basically uh, that's the combination of this uh, all those stuff if you don't declare your uh, one yourself serialization process will still generate serial version uid in that case it will fail for any changes in the class that we have seen now third point you have if you declare the serial version uid that's that uh, that gives you control over the versioning when you think class has grown in a way uh, that that is not compatible with the previous version then you can change the serial version uid if you think cha change in the class are not significant enough to change the serial version uid you may choose to retain the same serial version uid in that case serialization and deserialization will not fail even if your class had been changed and that we have already seen now fourth point fourth important point you have serial version uid is declared as a private static final long and it is always better to declare one uh, in order to have control over the versioning of the class so that's all i wanted to discuss uh, uh, about serial version version uid what's the significance of serial version uid when you do the basic serialization process in java so guys i hope you enjoyed learning this video if you really like this video then hit on the like button and don't forget to share and subscribe my youtube channel